friends welcome to the next video of itl in this video we are going to learn about knowledge management myself abhijit pawar and hope you have, you have seen multiple videos related with itl and this is also an interesting video which will give you the information about the knowledge management so let's start with the knowledge management what exactly it is so to understand knowledge management this process belongs to the service transition phase remember that we have seen the itl life cycle diagram and service transition phase is the third phase of the itl life cycle so this knowledge management process belongs to the third phase which is called as a service transition phase knowledge management empowers business and users with a repository of readily available solutions and eliminates the need of need to reinvent the wheel the meaning is that if already someone has done a work or you can say invention on generating something or you can say he has generated idea to uh, do a process or to execute a process or to manufacture a product then there is no need of you can say again someone doing the same thing or again reinventing the same process because already that process is available already that best practice is available just what we have to do we have to actually give the knowledge to that people that these are the things which are already available or these are the process which already we have been designed by someone else and you can directly use it so that is nothing but it uh, is the second uh, you can say point that it empowers the businesses and users with a repository of readily available solutions and that's why it eliminates the need of reinventing the wheel so there is no need of you can say uh giving you can say more time on reinventing whatever already has been invented what are the primary objectives of knowledge management the first primary objective of knowledge management is to share the information with relevant users they can be you can say the internal stakeholders they can be the external stakeholder it can be you can say uh, the internal customer or the external customers so sharing the information with relevant user is the primary objective of the knowledge management the second primary objective is optimizing the resources by sharing already available knowledge so if i have something which is already been created and if i share that particular information with my you can say employees or the you can say the people who are working inside my organization then automatically what will happen they will not spend more time on you can say doing the same thing or repeated uh, repeated things so then automatically what we are doing is that we are optimizing the resources which are available with us next is to distribute knowledge to the right user at the right time and make it accessible so some of the informations are available with us but it has to be shared with the correct user and then we have to decide that when this information has to be shared and that information must be available or accessible to that particular users that is again a primary objective of the knowledge management now to understand knowledge management in a better uh, way we will take one example because we have to understand the pyramid of the knowledge management so we will we will take this example and then we will understand what exactly this knowledge management prism is or the pyramid is so to understand the knowledge management uh, pyramid uh, first we will start start with the bottom point that is called as a data now when we call as a when we call data data is nothing but they are the facts or figures or which we say we, we do not know anything from that particular raw facts and figures which are available for example if i uh, you take this example only which is given on the top Minus zero five is written. Minus fifteen is written. Zero seven is written. Eleven is written. New Zealand is written. Now this is a data which I have generated from some resource. I have got this particular data from some resources. But by looking at this particular facts and figures, I will not understand anything because there is no context related with it, or there is no meaning actually related with. It. I don't know the structure of this particular data, and when this particular data. gets converted into some meaningful thing then it is called as a information so some data which is processed and then converted into a meaningful thing is nothing but we call call it as a information so which is actually use, useful 
and which, which is in a, actually a structured format. Now using the information, for example, when I get the information like uh, minus 0, 5 and minus 15 stands for the temperature range. 0, 7 and 11 actually are related with the, you can say, the months, the range of the month which are available. And New Zealand is nothing but the name of the country. So now the data is, got, is getting converted into a meaningful thing so that I can I can actually get the information like a minus 5 and 15 is a temperature, 7 and 11 is a month and New Zealand is a country. So that, that is nothing but we call it as an information. Now this information will help you to get some knowledge out of it. So what knowledge I will get from this particular you can say information. So I will get the knowledge that the temperature in New Zealand ranges from minus 5 degrees Celsius to minus 15 degrees Celsius from the month of July till the month of the November. And from this now I have got a knowledge that if I am planning for you can say a trip or if I am planning for a particular business tour, I should not plan that particular tour in the month which is starting from July to November because the temperatures are really low in this particular country. And that is nothing but you can say the next you can say step which is available is called as a knowledge where it actually it is in a contextual form or we get some learning out of it and knowledge will, will actually help you to take some decisions. So actions or decisions can be taken based on the you can say the information you got and the knowledge which you have acquired from that particular information. Now with this knowledge you can take some you can say strategic decisions and these strategic decisions are actually done by the next step that is called as a wisdom. So I can take a strategic decisions that if I am having a traveling a travel company or a tour company then with this particular knowledge which I have I will always plan the different you can say tours which are there or uh, if I am planning for different types of you can say the tours uh, in groups all these tours I will plan excluding the months from July to September. So if somebody comes to me and say that uh, our group wants to go to New Zealand uh, in you can say August then I will say no no we cannot plan a tour in that particular month because this is the temperature which is available and uh, you may not survive in that particular temperature over there. So this is called as a wisdom which actually helps us in taking some strategic decisions for the business. So for any business or organization knowledge management is really important. Sharing the information with you can say the people or the users at the right time and that information should be available to everybody. So always remember that when we, when we collect the uh, you can say data from different resources and when it is processed that becomes an information. Information when it is in a structured format and we learn something from it then that becomes a knowledge which we are gaining from it and with the help of that knowledge what actually we achieve is nothing but we call it as a wisdom. So this, this is a you can say a pyramid of you can say knowledge management uh, which is there inside the ITL. So thank you very much. Hope uh, this video will help you to understand uh, the knowledge management which is there inside the ITL. Thank you very much.